Hello, my name is Allison uh, Crane. I'm a nursing student at Brandman University. This is my nurse practitioner's head to toe assessment. This is my model, Jacob. Um, so first you start off by introducing yourself, washing your hands. Um, before I came in the room, my assistant, assistant took your vital signs, your blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature were all within normal limits. Okay. Um, your weight and height is all um, within normal limits as well for your age. Um, and I'm going to just look you over. Um, I'm going to assess your posture. You have good posture. You look well-groomed, well-nourished. Um, I don't see any um, thing that stands out, any red flags right now. Okay. Um, if you have, at any point during this exam, if you have any um, pain or if you feel uncomfortable with anything, let me know. Okay. Um, and then um, for the purposes of this video, um, um, breast and genitalia is going to be deferred. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? No. So I'm going to start off um, by looking at your head and then we're going to work our way kind of down. Okay. okay. First I'm looking at the scalp, palpating for any any um, deformities. I'm looking for any masses, any lesions. Um, if I see any lesions, we would be measuring those. Um, we'd be looking at contour, shape, color, those kinds of things. Um, we're going to continue that. Any tenderness there? No. No? Okay. And then from there, we are going to be looking at your um, TMJ. Go ahead and, this is your temporal mandibular joint. Go ahead and um, open, close. Looking for any popping, any cooking. I don't feel any. Um, no, it's not uncomfortable for you, is it? No. No. Okay, good. Um, and that, um, being able to open and close that joint, tests the motor function of trigeminal nerve number five. Um, while we're here, we're also going to test the sensation portion of the trigeminal nerve. Um, so I'm going to be um, checking your sensation in your face, okay. and then we're also going to continue with sensation down your arms and your legs. Okay. So this is what you're going to feel. This is the soft, and this is sharp. So okay. I'm going to have you close your eyes and tell me what you feel. Okay. Soft. Sharp. Sharp. Soft. Sharp, soft, 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 sharp, sharp, soft, soft. Good, good. So um, that is intact as well as um, the sensation portion of your trigeminal nerve is intact. And now I'm going to be testing um, for sensation. I want to see if you can feel vibrations, okay? okay? So I just want you to put your hands out on your lap. Yeah, I feel it. You feel vibrations? Yeah, I feel vibrations. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I feel it. <coughs> okay, good, good. All right, um, next we are going to be checking your eyes. So we're going to start with um, like a visual exam. I'm just going to look. I'm going to be looking at your lid, your conjunctiva, the sclera, the iris, the cornea, the pupil. I don't see any discharge. Um, it's all white. looks healthy to me. Uh, I don't see any dryness or any anything like that. Um, we're going to also be testing your vision. Um, I'm going to have you cover one eye, um, and then I want you to read the line that you can read the smallest line. E-P-T-Z-O. Okay. And then can you cover the other eye? And can you read, if it's the same line, read it backwards? Okay. O-Z-T-P-E. Okay. So you have 20-30 vision. Do you wear glasses normally? Yeah. Okay. So this, um, this um, testing your visual acuity tests op the optic nerve. Okay. Um, and now we're going to check the ocular motor, the trochlear, and the abducens nerve by looking at your fields of gaze. So I'm going to have you look at the end of this pen light, um, and I'm going to have you keep your head still, just follow with your eyes. So we're looking for any nystagmus, we're looking for any discontributed movements, and your eyes were um, perfect in conjugate in their movements, okay? I didn't see anything there. Um, also, we're going to be looking at pu pupil reaction to light. Um, we're going to see if they respond briskly, sluggishly. Go ahead and look straight ahead. Okay. Your pupils are about a three millimeter. That's normal. And they do respond to light and accommodation, and they are brisk um, with my pen line. Um, next, we are going to move to um, peripheral vision. 
I'm gonna wiggle my fingers. Let me know when you see them. Wiggle. Yeah. No. 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 Perfect. Okay. Good. Um, and lastly, we um, um, are going to move on to the ears. Okay. So I'm going to be doing an inspection of the outer ear first, looking for any drainage, any swelling, palpating, palpating the mastoids on either side, um, and then we're going to be doing an exam looking at the ear canal and the tympanic membrane. Okay, so tympanic membrane's pearly gray, um, translucent, I don't see any fluid, any redness, any debris, looks good, and you would do that on the other side as well. Um, we're going to be testing your hearing. Um, we're going to be looking at the acoustic cranial nerve number eight. So I'm going to be first doing um, a whisper test. So I'm going to have you close your eyes, um, and then you're going to hear a sound. Let me know which ear you hear it on, okay? Left. Okay. And then um, we're going to do it again. Good, good. Next, we are going to be checking um, for hearing. I want you to tell me if you can hear this more in the left ear or the right ear or in both ears, okay? Cool. Okay, good. And next, I'm gonna be doing the Rhine test. The Rhine test looks at um, bone to air conduction. Um, normal bone to air conduction is, um, you should be able to hear twice as long through the air as you can through your bones. Excuse me for one second. So um, that's normal. You could hear it for longer through the air than you could through the bony process, okay? Um, and next, we are going to be looking at your nose. So we're just going to be doing an inspection. Um, I'm going to have you cover one nostril and breathe in. Now the other nostril and breathe in. Good. Um, we could also do an inspection looking at the inside of your nose. See that it's pink and moist. Um, I don't see any bleeding. don't see any swelling. Um, I'm going to put some scents in front of you, and I want you to... Um, Tell me what you smell. Um, I'm going to have you cover one nostril. This is looking at your olfactory cranial nerve, okay? Lemon. Good, good. And then the other side. Vanilla. Good, perfect. And then um, your olfactory cranial nerve is intact. Now we're going to move on and we are going to be looking at your mouth. So I'm going to have you open your mouth and say, ah. Okay, so I see equal rise of the uvula and palate. That would um, indicate that the hypoglossal and vagus nerves are intact. We could also check gag reflex. A positive gag reflex would tell us that those reflex, those um, glossal pharyngeal and vagal nerves are also intact. Um, and then we can look at the tonsils. Go ahead and open again. We're looking for any enlargement, um, making sure that they're symmetrical, asymmetrical. Um, tonsil swelling could indicate abscess, peritonsillar abscess, um, maybe even the presence of tonsils, whether or not um, you have them. Um, lastly, we're going to look at um, the, you look for any lesions in the mouth, look at the teeth, make sure they're clean, there's no caries, and then you're going to look at the hypoglossal nerve. Um, so I'm going to have you stick out your tongue, uh, go up with your tongue, and down, left, and right. Okay, now close your mouth and push your tongue against your cheek. Okay, good, good. So the hypoglossal nerve is intact. And now we're going to move on to the neck. I'm going to palpate. I'm going to have you turn your head to one side and swallow. Okay, I'm feeling the, the um, thyroid. I don't feel any nodules. It doesn't feel enlarged. That's good. Um, no tenderness. You don't have any No, tenderness. no tenderness. Okay. Excuse me. And then I'm going to palpate the lymph nodes, okay? Um, looking for uh, mobility, size, um, any swelling, any tenderness there as well. Um, we can fill for a carotid thrill while we're here. No thrills felt bilaterally. Um, and then we're going to do um, some spinal accessory nerve. So I'm going to have you shrug your shoulders. Okay, good. And I'm going to have you turn your head against my hand. Okay, and this way. Good. Um, 
uh, so spinal accessory nerves intact. And now I'm going to do some range of motion. So I'm going to have you turn your head to the left and to the right. I'm going to have you flex your neck down and then extend it back. Okay. And with this, you can also test um, muscle strength. So you could have him turn like against my hand, like we did before. We could turn, pu push down or push back against my hand. Um, and you want to make sure that each side, um, if you're testing, is symmetrical. Uh, now I'm going to have you stand up. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, have you go ahead and um, ex uh, up, down. Okay. And then you're going to go abduction and adduction. Okay, and then I'm going to have you bend your elbows in and out, and we could do the same thing. Don't don't let me pull your arms down. You could check both sides symmetrically, um, push down with your wrists. I'm going to have you bend them down and up, and go kind of side to side with your hands. You could also check muscle strength for abduction and adduction um, right there. I'm going to have you um, go ahead and flex your hip, and down, other one and down. Okay. Um, and then I can also um, have you, I'll have you sit down for right now, um, and we will have you um, bend your knee, and out, other one, okay, and then with your foot, we're going to have you point it up and point it down, good, all right, good, and then we can test strength here, so push out, and pull back, so good, so you do that and make sure it's symmetrical between the left and the right sides, um, and then, um, while we're doing that, we will also continue with the musculoskeletal system and we'll check reflexes, okay? So we're going to check the uh, bicep, okay? Let me have you put your arm up. Tricep, good. The brachioradialis. And we have the patellar. We have the Achilles back here. And then we're lastly checking the Babinski reflex making sure that the toes fan down. If they fanned out, that would be abnormal. You would see that with neuro patients as well. Um, and now we're going to test cerebellar function. So I'm going to have them stand up. Um, we are going to have you put your hands out. I'm going to have you take each hand and touch your nose. Okay. Um, and then um, go ahead and put your hands on your lap. And you're going to rapid movements. Perfect. Perfect. Good coordination there. And then I'm going to have you walk. Let me adjust the camera so that we can see you're walking. Okay. I'm going to have you walk normal for me. Then I'm going to have you walk on your toes. Then on your heels. And then I'm going to have you walk heel to toe. Good. And then I'm going to have you stand out like this. And I'm going to have you do a shallow knee bend. Perfect. And um, keep standing. I'm going to have you put your arms out in front of you. And go ahead and close your eyes. Uh, you won't fall, and if you do, I'll catch you. If you're looking for any imbalance, this is checking cerebellar function. Okay, good. So go ahead and sit down. Um, next, we are going to be looking at your uh, chest and your back, your, your torso, basically. We're going to be um, feeling and auscultating listening to your lungs and your heart. Okay, so I'm going to be checking for tactile preeminence, this feeling of vibrations. You should feel equal vibrations between left and right. Uh, asymmetry could indicate that you have consolidation or fluids or pleural effusion, that kind of thing, masses. Um, so every time you feel me move, I want you to say 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, and then we do the same thing on your back. 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, I'm going to have you actually sit on your knees for the camera, good. Um, and we're gonna be checking um, your back. We do an inspection. Um, we are gonna watch breathing, look at um, rate, rhythm of your breathing, and then we're gonna have you take a deep breath in when you're ready. Okay, and I'm looking for um, equal movement in my thumbs out, showing that there's symmetrical rise and fall of both sides of the chest. Um, and now I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in and we're gonna test uh, respiratory and diaphragmatic excursion. So take a deep breath in and hold it when you're ready. Go ahead and exhale. Now, when you're ready, I'm going to have you exhale out and hold it. Okay, so 
So we're looking for the change in the level of the lungs um, when he breathes in and breathes out. It should be between three and six centimeters. His is about five, so that's good, that's normal. Um, also, when we do this kind of an inspection, we're looking at the shape of the chest, looking um, for any concavity or um, pigeon chest, any barrel chest, we're looking at the anterior, posterior diameter. It should be one to two and his is normal. Um, and while we're here, we're going to be listening to lungs. We're going to be listening with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And um, you'd listen for inspiration and expiration on in each location. Um, and you'd be listening for um, bronchial sounds up top, bronchiovesicular sounds a little further, and then vesicular sounds down below. Making sure you don't hear any adventitious sounds, which would be like rails, crackles, um, any wheezing, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to have you actually turn around. Um, doing the same thing on the chest, you listen in all the areas for all the same lung sounds. Okay. Uh, next, we will do um, an assessment of the cardiac function. So first, we're going to start by checking the pulses. You have pedal pulses, or you have um, radial pulses here, checking rate and rhythm. Then you have your pedal pulses down here you want to check making sure that they're plus to you, they're not bounding, they're not too um, weak, that they're equal. We're looking at circulation as well. Um, you're going to be listening for breweries with the bell of your stethoscope, your carotid brewery, on both sides and palpating for a thrill. You don't feel any. And then we're going to be listening to heart sounds with both the diaphragm and the bell. With the bell, you would listen to um, S3 and S4 sounds, and with the diaphragm, and S1 and S2 sounds. So I'm going to be pointing out the locations where we'd listen. So at the second intercostal space to the right of the sternum, you'd listen to the aortic valve. And then second intercostal space to the left is pulmonic. Third is Erd's point, which is where you hear your S1, S2. Then the fourth intercostal space is your tricuspid valve, and then you have your mitral valve, which is the fifth intercostal space in this clavicular line. That's also the apical um, point of maximal impulse, okay? Um, and you listen with your bell and your stethoscope in all those locations. Now we are going to be doing an abdominal assessment. I'm going to have you lay down, okay? Looking at the abdomen, checking for any hernias, any scars, any lesions. Looks good. Um, we're going to be listening to all four quadrants. Listening for bell sounds, making sure that they're present, not hyperactive or hypoactive. Um, and then with the bell, we are going to be listening for um, breweries. So we have the aortic, the iliacs, or the renal, I'm sorry, the renal arteries, the iliac arteries, and then the femoral arteries. You'd listen for breweries, making sure there's not any turbulent flow. And then lastly, you would palpate. And you're going to palpate for any masses, any tenderness, any discomfort, um, any pain with that? No. No? Good. So, um, so far everything checks out as normal. Um, this would be the conclusion of this assessment. Um, he has a normal physical. You can sit up. Um, thank you for your time and participation. Thank you.